Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. We are happy and delighted to host and welcome you to the second session of D2 of the FTP. At this outset, I deem it my privilege to extend a warm welcome to our resource person, Dr. Felsi de Souza. Before we start, some house rules to be followed. Your mics are muted by default. Please use chat box for any queries or questions to the speaker. You can pose the question during the session and it will be answered during Q&A session. The slides by the speaker will be made available to the participant based on speaker's discretion. The recording of the webinar will be available on SJC YouTube channel in a week's time. The webinar is purely on gaining knowledge and for self-improvement. Feedback link will be mailed to the participants at the end of Q&A session. Please fill it and submit it before 6 p.m. today evening. These certificates will be issued to the participants who attend all the sessions and submits the feedback form. Now, I invite Dr. Usha, Associate Professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, SJC, to introduce the speaker to the gathering. Over to you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Sandhya, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Today, I take the privilege of introducing our distinguished speaker, Dr. Felsi D'Souza. Dr. Felsi D'Souza is currently working as a librarian in the Department of Central Library, St. Joseph Engineering College. Madam has 23 years of work experience. Dr. Felsi has done her diploma in Library and Information Science from Oman Polytechnic College, Mangalore. And she has done her bachelor's and master's in library and information management systems from Annamala University and has completed her PhD from Mangalore University. Dr. Felsi Ma'am is recognized as the member of doctoral committee of research scholars under LISC board VTU. Now she has authored several peer review conference and journal papers. Her areas of specialization are library automation and networking and digitization and archiving. We welcome you, Dr. Filsi D'Souza, ma'am. Thank you, madam, uh, for introducing me. Um, good afternoon to you all. Before starting my session, um, I would like to uh, thank uh, the management of St. Joseph Engineering College and the organizing committee of this uh, one week FDP for providing me an opportunity uh, to, uh, con uh, to conduct this session. So in this session, I'm going to talk to you about some of the tools and technologies uh, uh, that you can use uh, to enhance uh, your research process. So these are the tools uh, which have come across and uh, I would like to uh, share uh, with you all. So moving on to the overview of my presentation. Uh, so I will be going to talk to you about the uh, automatic uh, alerts for researchers. And then I will be talking on the different reference management software tools, then journal selection tools, uh, research language, author name ambiguity, and research misconduct. So we have an automatic alerts called RSS feeds. Let us see what are RSS feeds and how do they work. RSS means is a really simple syndication, uh, which means indication means uh, sharing or uh, transliteration. And it is an XML file uh, that provides a concise summary of uh, the content of a web page. It helps you to keep up with the information from many websites, library databases, and other online resources without having to visit uh, them individually. Uh, it is a file which is revised every time when the web page is updated. RSS enables users to create customized sources of information. And it also helps readers. Uh, RSS readers can be web-based or desktop. 
RSS readers also helps to collect, organize, and make available latest articles of your interest or area delivered to your desktop as soon as it is made available. So RSS feeds are also available under different publishers platform. Uh, we have a icon here, uh, it shows, uh, this is an uh, RSS feed alert icon under the publisher uh, IEEE. This is a IEEE publisher page and you can see the icon over here uh, showing the RSS alerts. You can also create RSS feeds for your website using RSS feed creation uh, tools. So these are the few uh, popular RSS feed readers. So we have Inno Reader, Feeder, Feedly, uh, Great News, RSS Bandit, RSS OWL, and Ryan. So these are the various feeds uh, can be viewed in a feed reader or aggregator, and a wide range of readers are freely available, which you can download it to your uh, desktop. Now, how do we stay abreast with the scientific literature as uh, new journal papers are coming up all the time? Before we used to subscribe all the journals because they are not sold for free anyway. Whereas we are getting some articles uh, to our emails uh, which are very difficult to remember the particular paper. So we were discussing here how is an RSS feed reader help us for keeping up with uh, journal publications. As I told you, many RSS feed readers are now available for free, which you can download and use it. So uh, I have found uh, uh, in my work uh, a very good uh, reader, which is called as Feedly. So Feedly is a, a robust feed reader which aggregates information from around the web into one convenient place. You can use it to view updates on any topic you are interested in. You can find, organize all your trusted sources at one place. You can share insights with your team. It is cloud-based and it uh, works on different uh, cross platforms also. And you can share it on the social media tools. So I have a few uh, slides here uh, regarding the setting up of Feedly RSS Reader. So before setting up uh, the Feedly to your desktop, uh, you have to open your Gmail account. So you can see this page. This is my Gmail account. You have to open this Gmail account. Um, remember the Feedly uh, will not going to send any uh, messages or uh, uh, emails to your, uh, your Gmail account. Uh, it only requires to send the uh, references uh, when it is downloaded to your Feedly Gmail account. So then uh, select the new window and type www.feedly.com and the Feedly page will be displayed saying that uh, you are welcome to work on the new feed. So then click on to get started here. And it will ask you that whether you want to uh, uh, select uh, the Google or the Facebook. So you can select, uh, if you have the Facebook account, you can uh, select the fa Facebook or you can select Google, but I recommend you to select the Google because we are all having our Google account. So the Feedly uh, Gmail account will be open. When you click on to that Get Started, the Feedly page will be open. And well, you, you can put your references in the Feedly Reader box here. So. Then go to the new window and select a journal, journal of your choice. Put the URL on the URL browser, put the uh, uh, credentials of uh, the, the URL address sorry, of the journal here and that journal will be open, the page will, journal page will be open. I've selected 
IEEE transactions on fuzzy system. This is a IEEE journal. And here you find the RSS uh, alert icon. I think all of you can see it. Uh, this is the RSS alert icon. So you click on to that. When you click on to that, you find the RSS feeds of that journal. Uh, and select the URL of the RSS feeds here, select it and you go back to your Feedly reader and you paste it on the uh, place over here on this box uh, and say save it. And this is a, how it is saved to your Feedly GMA account. So on the left side, uh, you have an option there you can create the collections. Like you can create a collection on the journal conferences and you can name those uh, collections, uh, either journal or uh, conference, and you can uh, put these uh, references under that collection and you can save it. So you can view this. Uh, uh, so you can do it for the other journals also and you can save it. And during your convenient time, uh, you can go back to your collection, select the collection of your choice, and you can select the articles so which you wanted to, uh, which is relevant to your uh, subject or topic, and still uh, to go through that uh, fully, if you do not have time, there is an option here, read later, read later. So you can select it and you can put it under the selected uh, articles, under the read later option here, and like this, uh, it is selected, these are the selected articles of my uh, relevant topic. So I've selected it from this to here under the read leader. So uh, when I get time, I'll go back to the reader there and select, uh, click on to that. That time the abstract of that uh, article will be displayed here. So this is the abstract of that, which one, the, the article which I've selected here, this is the abstract. And there you can um, share it. There is a uh, social media tools here you can see on the top uh, you have Gmail, uh, you have uh, email, uh, you have uh, Facebook, Twitter, etc. etc. So, if you find this is uh, worthy and it should be uh, uh, read by your students, you can share this uh, 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 article or the abstracts to, to the email of your students or the group of your students. So this is when you said, um, this is uh, how it looks and it is, you have to type here the email of the persons or the students whom you want to wish to send that article. And, uh, and this is the box uh, showing the email uh, page. So this is how uh, the Feedly uh, works. Hope you all, uh, I hope it is uh, useful to you. So next, coming to the uh, reference management tools. So uh, there are a lot of reference management tools are available. So uh, on the website, uh, you can uh, go through it and uh, this will help you to search the literature. Uh, literature search is a uh, vital step in developing a strong research proposal. The next step after performing a literature search is to manage the articles uh, that you have selected, which would provide you with a strong foundation. So what are the so I told you these are the different uh, reference tools. So we have the EndNote and Mendel is there, Zotero is there, and we have reference works. So you, you can uh, go through it, uh, it's available uh, online. You can uh, save it to your desktop. A lot of videos are also available. You can uh, browse it and you can find the, find uh, if you, and you find which is a good one for you can download it, but, 
Yeah, these tools uh, will help you uh, to organize, annotate, and manage your references, import references from online databases, uh, library catalogs, websites, and PDFs, create in-text citations and formatted bibliographies. You can share your references with uh, other researchers. You can work on your references anytime, anywhere, and it is available on web uh, versions also. So here, um, now which one to select? So we have a, a quick comparison of uh, uh, selected reference management softwares uh, here, so which I found it on the website. Uh, this is a uh, comparison uh, with the Mendeley EndNote, Mendeley with others, EndNote reference works, Zotero, etc where we can see uh, the Mendeley has got the uh, uh, best uh, uh, results uh, showing that uh, it is the best uh, source of uh, reference for managing the uh, references. So now why Mendeley? So I told you it's a best reference source for researchers. We also use it uh, in our college and we found it uh, very useful because it allows you to search, add, cite and share academic papers, journals, conference proceedings, etc. And it's free reference management tool. It works on um, different cross platforms and it's available on various uh, versions like desktop, web, mobile also is available. It is an innovative software, easy to implement. It automatically exports in popular citation formats. It's extremely useful and convenient to use. And it also imports, you can also import libraries from other managers of citations like EndNote and Zotero. So this is a Mendeley icon. So let us see um, how to install. I brought few slides for you just for your, uh, just to show you how, it, uh, how to install the Mendeley. You can go through the YouTube uh, or videos. Uh, a lot of videos are available about the installation of Mendeley to your desktop. So you have to uh, go to the site www.mendeley.com and you have to uh, download Mendeley to your desktop here. It is downloaded over here. And then the you have to uh, open the you have to open the icon. Uh, you have to click on to that uh, icon on the desktop and the Mendeley page will be opened. This is a Mendeley desktop. And then uh, you have to uh, this is my page, Mendeley page. Here on the left side on your computer, you have to create a folder under my library. Under my library, uh, you have to create a folder on your computer and you should name it. And then you can add the references from your computer. You must be having some articles saved there on your computer. You can uh, add those uh, to this uh, folder under the library. And you also can add the references from your web sources, uh, from the websites, maybe journal websites. You can add the references to this collection once again. You also can uh, create a bibliography, like uh, different uh, citations, uh, reference citation styles are available. And you can select the choice of your style of references. And you can also create a bibliography. So this is a uh, Mendeley desktop where all the articles are uh, saved under the library folder under my collections and you can select the PDF of the article of your choice and it will be displayed the article the manuscript title and the abstract will be displayed on the right side here and this way you can uh, use uh, the Mendeley for referencing purposes. Next, we have this uh, research communication.
So now what is research communication? So research communication is an uh, integral part of the research uh, process where the publication of research work is done in the form of journals, conferences, uh, book chapters, uh, and other forms by which the researchers communicate their scholarly outcome, outcome during and after their research. The published material during and after uh, the published material pursues further research activities and achieves credits and citations. They also play a vital role in university ranking, funding, projects, and institutional reputation. They are equally important for professional growth. Further to get your degree awarded, there is also a mandate from the uh, UGC or the university to get your uh, publications published uh, in the uh, indexed, uh, the Scopus index journals or other indexed uh, and indexed under various databases uh, through reputed publishers having good matrices. So with all this, now how to select a good journal? So these are the some issues which I already told you. So how to get my work published under the good journal is a question here. So we have to consider certain things so before publishing our journal, that is the scope of the journal and uh, uh, which includes the discipline uh, under the multidisciplines, age and frequency, uh, the type of audience, it is national, international, publication affiliation, and also the review process, the method of peer review, time for sub sub submission, it requires rejection rate and correction and retraction history and the access type. It is uh, published under open access, closed access or hybrid access. Hybrid access is an open access, uh, which is uh, also uh, subscribed by pay. Um, so these are the few things. So we need to consider again the coverage and the scale and size of the uh, publications, that frequency, the number of issues, the article length, reference styles, language, and the coverage, the geographical coverage. And the first and foremost, the impact factor is, which is very important, the journal metrics of various metrics and the article download statistics. So uh, certain journals, uh, uh will will be uh, some they, they will, there will be certain journals uh, which will be called as uh, the fake journals uh, where they have got a fake uh, journal impact factor because they do not go under any uh, peer review process and uh, they do not have any journal policies and they are simply uh, published uh, with the, in a way of uh, making uh, money. So we need to look and look into this issue also before publishing our journal. So peer review journals. So what is peer review journals? Peer review journals are those which uh, 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 go into a, a process called a peer review. It is uh, reviewed by the reviewers or by of the uh, journals, uh, publisher uh, journals, and then um, those journals uh, will be uh, published, and those journals are called uh, peer review journals or scholarly journals. Now, how to select a right journal? Is there any uh, tools to guide me? So, let us see. Okay, so before going to uh, search for the journals, uh, the good journals, so uh, you need to uh, know the, what are the best practices of, there is a certain best, you have to follow certain best practices of journal selections that uh, you have to make a list of journals available. 
So under different sources, guides or your friends, determine the impact of that journal. You have to consult various databases, indexing databases, where you'll find the metrics or the publisher's page, you'll find the metrics there. So you have to find that. Make sure the journal scope and policies match your research findings. Check the journal requirements and distributions, that is reference styles, page, etc. Collect information about the journal's peer review process and check the instructions for authors there. There will be guidelines for authors. You have to check it uh, where you'll find a uh, lot of information before publishing your journal. So there are uh, journal selecting tools available. So there are some they are freely available, some through the publishers they are available. So a lot of free journal selecting tools are available. So then publisher journal selecting tools are available. Citation databases also you can will help you to get the good journals. Bibliography databases also help you. SJR index, it is Hamego Journal Ranking Index, is a public portal which also provides the list of journals and there's a journal citation report from the uh, you find a journal, master journal list of, of, from the uh, JCR uh, Web of Science. So let us see one by one uh, what are these uh, tools. So we have a um, a journal selecting tool. Uh, first of all, uh, I found this uh, journal guide. This is a free journal, uh, which provides uh, uh, databases of across all academic fields. So it contains all the discipline journals over here, and it has got about forty-six thousand plus journals, and which also provides the journal metrics and use the scope of the journal and similar articles uh, published last 10 years. You can see it and it also uh, helps to match your uh, manuscript uh, title and abstracts. So this is the uh, page. So to use this uh, journal finder uh, tool, uh, you have to click on, go to the site called www.journal guide.com here www.journalguide.com and the page of the journal guide uh, uh, finder will be opened here and here uh, you can see uh, there are two two uh, options here uh, that uh, first one is to um, type or paste the title of your manuscript here and the second one is for uh, abstracts you can put your abstracts over here here and this is for the title and this is the abstracts and uh, you can click on to go to go to here so you will find this page so here you can see uh, whichever the uh, manuscripts. For example, I have put uh, the manuscript title as Fuel Economy of Hybrid Electric Flight and the, my abstracts here on the, I have pasted over here uh, in that previous page and this is the result I got matching my manuscripts with uh, journals in the, uh, this journal guide uh, finder. So there are 17 journals matched your search, it says here. And you can see the journals over here with the other details also, which contains uh, the publisher's name here under different publishers, which includes Xavier also and other publishers here. And the impact factor of the journal, you can see from the lowest, it goes to the higher number here. And of course, you can see the journal titles over here and you can select the journals there and the speed speed of its publication and whether it is open or closed access, it is here. And the follow-ups, like how many uh, days or weeks it will take to publish your article in the in the publisher, uh, in, in that journal. 
So here uh, I found uh, the journal uh, which matching my uh, paper that is having the highest impact factor that is 2.573 here. This is only an example I'm showing you. Um, I have not written any article on that. Uh, this is an example. Uh, so here uh, there is an applied energy which uh, by, uh, under Elsevier publications. Uh, with the highest impact factor of 2.573. So I can uh, select that and I can submit my article uh, to that uh, journal. So when you submit your article, it will be published under Applied Energy uh, Journal. So this is your, after submitting everything, the process gets over and finally, it will publish in under Applied Energy Journal. So this is a, how the journal guide, journal finder, journal guide uh, uh, finder, journal finder uh, tool will uh, help you to publish your article or select the right journal to publish your manuscripts. So next uh, you have a tool called, uh, journal finder tool called Idanza. So this is an another very good uh, journal um, uh, which contains a number of uh, journals, uh, about 28,000 and also abstracts and uh, it has got uh, various filters, that search filters it has got like uh, open access or uh, impact factor wise or uh, uh, indexing wise you can search it and you have the you can also uh, get the journal matrix of the uh, journal you are looking for so here the again the procedure is same so you have to uh, put your uh, the manuscript title here and the abstracts here you can also put the keywords but i think uh, to uh, if you put the title and the abstracts, I think it is more than enough to get the right journal for your manuscripts. Then after putting those two uh, uh, issues there, I mean the fields there, uh, you can go and search for the journal, select search journal there, and you will find this page of the uh, answer journal finder page. See, this is all free of cost. You don't have to pay for this. It's uh, all available uh, freely on online. So here, this is a uh, abstract of which I put there and it is displayed over here. And it shows here, I told you it has got filters here, here where you can select you know, the options like under which field you want to, want to know the journals available uh, under which matches your uh, manuscripts. So there is journal matching options. Can you see here? This is a journal matching options and you can select the journals and also the impact factor, the range from 0 to 100. You can also, uh, there is a search, you can filter your search over here and also shows the index in which databases it has indexed. That also it is visible over here. You can see it indexed in science SCI indexed in SCI and, uh, and with the open access options, everything, and the frequency also, frequency of its publication, and also the impact factor, impact factor of that journal in that particular year. So all these details you will come to know before submitting your manuscripts to the uh, journal, and you can select the journal of your choice here with the, which uh, which you feel it is which is satisfactory to you and you can uh, submit your manuscript to the uh, journal next we have uh, another tool for uh, chain and this is a, a tool uh, which provides uh, the journals so it's relevant to the uh, medical science and uh, 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 it's, this contains uh, journals under the National Medical Library and uh, you will find this journal. So this is a page and this is a link. You have to go and you'll find the page and then the 
procedure is same. You'll find the journals over here with the uh, different uh, matrices and uh, the citations. Uh, citation details. Uh, you can select the journal of your choice and you can submit your manuscript. So this is all about the free journal uh, selecting uh, tools. Now coming to the uh, journal selecting tools under publisher platform. So a lot of journals, uh, tools are available under publisher platforms also. So uh, first of all, uh, I would like to uh, show you uh, the select journal selecting tool under the Elsevier uh, publisher. Uh, you have a Elsevier page over here. You have to go to the link uh, journalfinder.elsevier.com and the uh, page will be open here. This is the Elsevier journal finder page so uh, here you have the option uh, same you have told you in my uh, that uh, earlier uh, slides there uh, you have the option here to put the manuscript title here and the abstract and also the keywords then you go and find the journals here on the top on the top uh, right you have, uh, have an option here, find journals. Click on to that. So this is an example how I put the uh, manuscript title here on the box and this is the abstract I put here and click on to the find journal and you will find the journals, uh, different journals which matches your Paper. So these are the different journals uh, for which matches it matches the uh, topic here, or the title. As I mean, the your manuscript title and the abstract. The different uh, journals which matches your search will be displayed here. And then uh, you also find when you scroll down, you'll get n number of journals here because here it is a only a small slide I brought, so it contains only three journals here. It not means it's only three journals. It shows here 50 journals matching your paper. So that means you have 50 journals which matches your manuscript, and there you can go and find your journal of your choice. Plus, again, you have got under each journal the citation details. Uh, the, uh, for example, the impact factor of the journal and the acceptance rate of the journal and uh, 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 the, the decision of how many uh, weeks it will be published, how many days it will take, and the follow-up weeks, how many weeks it will take to follow that uh, journal get published. So these are the details you will find, and the site score also you'll find the site score of that journals. So accordingly, you can search for the journal of your choice, say, which has got uh, the highest impact factor and other uh, details, which will, of, uh, will be of uh, uh, help you to get it published. So you can select it and you can uh, submit your uh, manuscript uh, to the uh, uh, selected journal. Uh, this is how the elsewhere uh, journal finder will work. I think that will be of uh, useful for you. Uh, next, we have uh, the other uh, 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 publisher called the Springer, uh, where you have uh, an option for finding your journal. Please, when you click on to the journals suggester.springer.com you have a journal suggested page here it will be open and when you click onto this site the journal suggester page under the Springer publishers will be opened here this is also a free uh, under the Springer um, here uh, please remember and uh, you will find the journals here under the publisher platform only published under their 
publications like public uh, under their publisher platform like Elsevier only Elsevier will find and then Springer will find only Springer journals. So if you want to publish in Springer uh, published journals, you can select this tool and find the uh, relevant journals. So you have an IEEE uh, journal finder tool. And when you go to this uh, site publication recommender, you have a IEEE publication recommender page here. So it will be open when you select this link and you can again uh, put your manuscript title here in the box provided and the abstract over here. And you can find the journals which provide you various journal matrices and other citations it is where you can select the relevant journal once again and publish your paper under IEEE also. So next uh, we have the publisher platform under Wiley. So you have the link here. When you go to that link, uh, the Wiley page will be uh, find the journal that's right for your search with the title. Uh, with that title will be opened here. So then the uh, procedure is same. You can put the manuscript title here and the abstract here and you can go for search. So these are the uh, four uh, important um, and popular uh, journal uh, publisher platforms for selecting the uh, uh, right journal for your uh, for publishing your uh, paper. So uh, a number of open source journals, journal finding uh, tools are also uh, available. Uh, we have uh, one of that uh, one, uh, uh, is a, which one is a very uh, good one uh, that is called Inago. It is an open access uh, journal finder uh, from Inago and uh, which provides uh, about 14,000 uh, plus journals uh, and 5,000 million plus articles uh, published from 130 plus countries and it also provides the uh, uh, journal matrices like others and where you can uh, look into that and you can publish your papers. So these are the few uh, examples. So for more details, you can go through the uh, videos or sites, so which is very uh, user friendly. Uh, there are instructions over there. You can read it and it will help you to uh, get the best out of it. So there is an other, uh, uh, this is not a tool, uh, this is a uh, public portal of uh, SGR ranking by Sam uh, where uh, you can uh, find uh, journals uh, published under Scopus Index journals here. So here is, a, uh, you have to go to that link, SGR rankings. There, it is available, uh, siamago.com here, and you will find this here. You can put the ISPN number if you are, if you know the ISPN number of the uh, title of the journal, or you can put the title of the journal itself here, and you search for it, and you will find the journals here. These are the journals uh, alphabetically uh, uh, made available here, and these are. Uh, uh, made available under different subject category and uh, publisher wise country wise you can uh, search for it here uh, they are made available and you can also find the SGR rank of the journal here so here it is an alphabet list is a very lengthy list here you can put it uh, some about 30,891 journals are uh, there um, uh, under this and you can also see the uh, citation score of this journal. So in this way, this also helps you to know the uh, SGR, uh, the size score of the Scopus Index journal under SGR. So next, coming to the uh, JCR. So the Web of Science, uh, the master journal list is, is made available, uh, which is uh, 
the master channel list you can access it freely but uh, to log in to the jcr you have to for other details you have to register for it if it is a one time registration there no need to pay there and just only to log in to get your credentials you have to do that but to search for the impact factor of the journal under the jcr uh, web of science uh, you can go to that link uh, jcr report impact factor which is available and you will find this page web of science jcr uh, journal list so here you can put the isbn number of the journal uh, which you want to know the impact factor or the uh, uh the yeah impact factor of that uh, journal or that journal is uh, covered under web of science or no so you can put the title and uh, the or uh, the ispn number over here and you can define your search uh, with the keywords also so you will find the uh, uh the complete uh, details uh, the of that journal when you put the journal title over here or isbn number you will find the complete details of that journal so if you put the isbn number it will provide only that particular journal okay but if you put the title it will provide the titles uh, which are available under uh, the different titles which are available under that title will be displayed here you can select the journal which you are searching for or your choice if what is the impact factor of that journal under jcr and it will be displayed there below so this is the journal impact factor which you will find so that is all about uh, the uh, journal selection tools i hope all these tools will useful for you and uh, uh you can uh, find it uh, you can find uh, to uh, publish you find it more useful to publish your articles so next uh, the important uh, thing is uh, in the process of uh, research that uh, for publishing or for writing the reports or for uh, uh, writing proposals or anything uh, the language language what we use is very important you need to publish your research in the language uh, which is acceptable all over the world therefore we choose english because it is an international language of scientific publication but while writing articles we come across common grammar uh, errors uh, for example uh, spelling or uh, misuse of words uh, vocabulary synonyms and the punctuations um etc i think yesterday's uh, afternoon session uh, madam has uh, already uh, come across this uh, issues yesterday so uh, this is common uh, for everyone uh, because uh, english is not our mother tongue so now how to uh, come out of this uh, uh, grammar uh, error problems of to our uh, work like manuscripts or uh, sorry for papers or for any other work so how to come out of this uh, grammar uh, problems so there are tools uh, available once again so there are grammar checking tools available online Uh, which will suggest you to uh, suggest you to get your uh, corrections the spellings punctuations uh, make necessary corrections over there 
and to eliminate ambiguities and it will help you to reduce the rejection rate of your publications please remember if uh, this uh, language is also very important thing uh, before publishing your papers otherwise uh, your papers will be uh, rejected so there are tools so there are some of the popular tools called grammarly paper rater grammar check and ginger so you can once again go through these tools so uh, it's uh, available uh, online uh, through the videos you can go through it and i'm going to uh, explain you about uh, one of the tool here so the rest of the tools you can uh, check on your website there so we have a grammarly uh, report here this is a grammarly tool um, you can click on to the website which is available there and you will find this page and you can import your article in this place or you are any other work also not only the publications or any other work or in a word file here you can uh, import it and you can check the grammar of that uh, uh, word file of that document and you will find on the right side what are the and uh, the what are the suggestions these are the suggestions uh, given by that uh, uh, website the grammar report uh, software and you can have the options to um, correct it also when you click on to each suggestion it will give the uh, uh, solutions also how to correct that uh, mistake or whatever the Uh, grammar errors are there uh, you have to, how to correct this and you can do it it is very easy you can uh, do the corrections grammar corrections in by using this grammar uh, writing tool so like that uh, you can go through the other tools also so next coming to the author name ambiguity ambiguity in public publications usually the publications of an author are identified by author's name however we cannot always correctly map publications to authors because name of name can be ambiguous there are multiple reasons that cause author's name to be ambiguous for example authors may publish under multiple names for a variety of reasons including Uh, different transliterations uh, misspellings due to name change for different reasons and otherwise the use of nicknames due to the use of nickname also there is a, a possibility of getting the ambiguity in the, uh, in the author's name so the name ambiguity can affect the affect the accuracy of um, citation based impact analysis so this will affect your uh, citation based impact analysis for example uh, there is a, we have an author here while publishing uh, he has given uh, uh, his author name as uh, ramachandra rangappa rao so here whereas in a, one another publication he has only uh, given his name as r r rao another publication he has given his name as rao rr now how to come out of this ambiguity so can we uh, put this together is there any tool for that so this is a question so to come out of this uh, there is an best uh, tool called orchid i think you have uh, heard about it a uh, lot of uh, information is there orchid is an open researcher and contributor id which uh, which describes the connection between a researchers and the it's a data source that describes connection between a researchers and their works and it is a you it is unique to a researcher only one id will be uh, given to the uh, researcher uh, when he register for it 
and which will be permanent ID for him. And you know, it is it is also a persistent identifier. By having in this ORCID uh, ID, you can improve your visibility and uh, improve the visibility of your publications. It's an uh, open non-profit organization. which can be integrated uh, with the research fund, uh, funders uh, when you submit your uh, projects for the grants, the funders will obviously ask a request for the ORCID ID so that uh, they will come to know the uh, your publications, your profile and your other works uh, through uh, this ORCID ID profile and uh, also, the university's research organization, they will also uh, uh, check uh, under the institutional repositories, electronic thesis repositories, campus directories. Uh, they will be uh, uh, accessed uh, through these ORCID IDs. And the uh, publishers, uh, publishers, We'll also check when before or during when you publish uh, the uh, a paper to the publishers, uh, they will identify the author's uh, profile uh, or the author's um, uh, work uh, or the publications, uh, the previous publications and the impact of those journals, everything, and uh, even the reviewers uh, to this ORCID ID. And also the professional associations also request you to give the ORCID ID. So many uh, publishers uh, support, provide su uh, 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 supporting this uh, come out, uh, coming up with the ORCID IDs. Uh, they provide uh, the ORCID IDs, uh, means they don't provide the ORCID IDs. Uh, they are websites uh, which contains the ORCID IDs uh, where you can directly uh, import the articles to your ORCID ID and you can uh, uh, add it to your ORCID profile. So here once again I brought a few slides. Uh, you can go through the ORCID uh, site there. Uh, you, you, uh, the two, you videos are available of setting up an ORCID uh, uh, ID. Uh, uh, for, uh, for for you, so you can go to www.orchid.com and register there. And uh, Orchid registry is free of charge, which I told you. After registering, uh, you will get a 16-digit Orchid ID number. This is my Orchid ID homepage here. And here is my name, and this is my ORCID ID is here, 16 digit number. And you can edit your profile. On the right side, there is an option here, edit. You can edit your profile here, you can edit the bibliography, and uh, there is a funding option also. You can add the works, your works here, your publications, you can add it over here, and you can also uh, edit the educational information, your employment details, and the recent projects. You can add it over here. On the left side, uh, you can uh, edit your name. You can also add the other versions of your name here. So to avoid the ambiguity in your names, I told you in my previous slides there, so to avoid that ambiguity, if you have any other versions of your uh, name, you can edit that here or you can add that here. Uh, so whenever, um, uh, so when you import or add your work, uh, you the uh, you are publishers, uh, you your publication, you can uh, add it to your ORCID account, and ORCID will record from the outside databases also here. So you can add your works here. You can search the link from your system. If you have any work, you can add it here. 
and you can also add from the outside databases for example if you have anything from the scopus or publisher and scopus or under any other publishers if you have any uh, links for your articles you can directly import that to your uh, orchid uh, profile here and this way this is a abstract when you add the pdf here the directly the details abstract will be displayed over here so whenever whoever uh, watch your uh, orchid account uh, i mean the id so they will come to know your profile here and this is how the orchid uh, page will look hope you all understood this so uh, Still time is left. Can continue. Yes, ma'am. We can continue. Yeah. Okay. It is just three. Still half an hour are there. You can uh, twenty more minutes. You can take. Okay. Fine. Some few guys are there. Then I will wind up. So the. Next uh, thing is uh, regarding the mis uh, sorry uh, research misconduct. So research misconduct means uh, the fabrication, falsification, or plagiarism in proposing, performing, or reviewing research or in reporting research results. So fabrication is making up data or results or reporting them. and falsification is manipulating research articles manipulating research articles and the results plagiarism is an act of presenting another work or ideas as your own so we have an um, meaning of, of uh, plagiarism from the merriam webster online dictionary here what is plagiarism so it is a steal and pass off the ideas and words of another as one's own to use another's uh, production without crediting the source to commit literary theft to present as new and original idea product deriv derived from any existing source so in other words plagiarism is an act of fraud it involves both stealing someone else's work and lying about it afterwards so the acts considered uh, under plagiarism uh, as plagiarism are uh, turning in someone else's work as your own i told you already copying words or ideas failing to put a quotation in quotation marks giving incorrect information about the source of a quotation changing words but copying the sentence structure of a source without giving credit copying so many words or ideas from a source that makes up the majority of your work whether you give credit or not so these are some of the common excuses of for plagiarism so we always do that uh, by, by misunderstanding or by that this uh, i did that all those things and all so that will not work so by mis misunderstanding that uh, i think that was doing anything wrong lapse of judgment Uh, which i made a mistake but have not gone uh, i see that it should not happen it again and the escape the big escape uh, the vast amount of resources and publication the web popping a little here there and will most likely to go undetected the force of nature blaming external factors on their wrong doing and the mistake honest mistake so once again the lot of plagiarism tools are available some we need to subscribe for it uh, some are free, freely available under the uh, publishers sites also so these are the some popular uh, plagiarism tools we have uh, plagscan arcan turnitin authenticate 
and other plagiarism detection uh, tools, academic plagiarism tools, plagiarism checker, and many more. So we at our college uh, has uh, used a, a software called uh, Turnitin, uh, which gives the originality report. And uh, this is a page uh, which gives the originality report uh, under Turnitin. Uh, software. Uh, this is the um, originality uh, report of the article submitted with the uh, uh, rate of uh, the percentage of plagiarism is uh, displayed on the right side here. And you need to uh, uh, correct it, you go back to your manuscript and you find uh, you you can see here you can select what is uh, from where what is a uh, uh, this uh, uh, source or the from which source it is copied or pasted or uh, plagiarized so you will find it when you click on to each you will find from where it is you can go back there and if you have not uh, made uh, the reference of it on your references you can make it or in the sentences if you have copied you can go back and you can modify your sentences as your own sentence say uh, instead of if you have earlier copied that and you have put it over here in your manuscripts you can make the corrections over there and you can resubmit the uh, manuscript to the turn it in and get the acceptable originality report uh, percentage for before your publications so you, this also, um, uh, uh, this is a purchase software uh, and uh, you have got some uh, uh, this thing, uh, steps for its installations and uh, which I'm not going to tell you. you once again, I think if you are using it, well and good. Otherwise, uh, it is a purchased one, but it's a very nice one. So you can uh, go through the, uh, uh, if you are having it and you are not used it, I think uh, this is what I observed. Uh, many of uh, we have given access to it, but uh, they have not uh, those not all, but few of them have not used it. But please use it, and it will be very very useful for you for uh, your uh, publications. So a few. Uh, Plagiarism detection tools are also made available by, through the uh, publisher uh, platforms. Uh, we have a plagiarism detection tool under the Elsevier publishers. Uh, it's called a cross-ref similarity check uh, by, uh, yeah, uh, published by Authenticare, it says there. So this is a detection tool, plagiarism. So you will find when you submit to it, you'll find your uh, report here in this way, and you can um, check the similarity of your uh, work. So UGC has also uh, provided uh, some guidelines. So it says the research work carried out by the student Faculty researcher shall be uh, based on original ideas and uh, shall not have any similarities. So it also provided uh, the levels of plagiarism here. You can go through, it is available uh, under the UGC guidelines. So, so this is uh, all about uh, the few research I mean, the support tools, uh, which I have uh, come across. I hope uh, it will be of useful for you. So thank you for listening to me. I'm happy to answer uh, any questions now. Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you very much, uh, ma'am, for the presentation. Uh, it has been a very good experience for all of us, particularly those who are researchers. A vast uh, uh, amount of uh, information and uh, tools you have presented really well. Uh, thank you very much. Uh,
uh, madam on behalf of the college and our team uh, i thank dr elsie de souza thank you very much madam thank you sir uh, let us go for some of the questions there let us take uh, uh, i mean let's uh, i'll take the first question uh, there was a question on uh, it goes like this uh, do freely allow only open source uh, journal paper to be fed or accessible no it is a uh, uh, open access uh, feeder uh, uh, rss feeder and it allows uh, both open access and uh, uh, other uh, closed access journals also yeah there is you i think you answered this question but i'll once again repeat what is the importance of impact factor how do it uh, how it is uh, decided this impact factor uh, rating uh, impact factor is uh, very important uh, for i told you in my slides that uh, is for your uh, publications uh, uh, publications of your papers um where uh, to get your paper published under scopus index or other uh, indexing databases uh, which provide the uh, journal impact factor and this journal impact factor is uh, very important to assess the publications of your uh, to assess your publications either by your institute management or for uh, your uh, by, by the funding agencies and uh, by the uh, universities uh, and and the statutory committees also when they visit the college they ask for the uh, impact factor the journals published under the impact factor the having the impact factor uh, having the highest impact factor journals so, so that's why it's very important to publish under journal having the uh, impact factors okay man there is one more question one more question uh, there uh, what is the threshold level that is words for uh, plagiarism uh, it is under ugc uh, it is uh, 14 i think so um, uh, by vt it is considered as 10 i think uh, uh, i think ugc is also going to increase it by 15 uh, by uh, as as of now okay uh you answered that question in your presentation which pl uh, plagiarism tool is free one more question from the uh viewers um uh, you you have a lot of uh, uh, tools available uh, plagiarism tools um i think this academic plagiarism and plagiarism checker is there and uh, uh, these are all free and a lot many tools are also available under publishers also publisher platforms uh, very good uh, plagiarism tools are available which i showed you and uh, this uh, crossref uh, is a uh, free software there so you can uh, use it if you don't have any other questions i think uh... here is one more uh, question uh, madam suppose i am doing plag plagiarism before submission to journal and saved uh, repository now it shows uh, similar uh, similarity to our work uh, what need to be done okay uh, uh, this uh, can be rectified uh, before uh, i mean uh, before you submit uh, when you add an assignment uh, in the turnitin um, software uh, uh, there is an option uh, to uh, when you fill the profile your details of the name all those things and there is an uh, optional setting uh, option there for setting your uh, the this uh, profile before submitting your Uh, manuscripts uh, to turn it in for the checking the originality there there is an option uh, called a repository it has to be uh, deposited under the repository or non repository repository or no repository 
So they, you have to select it. If you select uh, the repository uh, if without knowing, um, sorry, <coughs> it will definitely uh, deposit after your submission. It will deposit submission to the Turnitin. It will definitely save it in the repository because while creating the assignment itself, you have not. Uh, given the option, uh, selected the option, there is not represented, selected as repository of change there. So it will definitely uh, save it under repository itself. And again, when you um, make the corrections and sub resubmit your manuscripts for the and it will give the, uh, uh, what, uh, the uh, uh, percentage more because it says, uh, the, because it will take from the previous uh, uh, submissions, uh, the whatever uh, you have given, uh, we have submitted and it was there in the repository because it will take from there and it will say it is plagiarism and it will take, then it will you will get a percentage of originality uh, more than what we have got before because it was there in the repository. Now, how to rectify it? Before uh, creating the assignment itself, I told you, you have to select no repository under the uh, edit, uh, I mean, uh, under the option settings there, uh, uh, repository. Other, if you have done it so, because I'm getting such questions uh, in the you know, past two, three months, uh, during this lockdown period, we are not able to meet each other, and I'm getting, I'm doing that only uh, guiding the faculties to get it rectified. So, uh, as we have got uh, no uh, rights of that, uh, uh, doing it as an admin, so we have to send and request to, to the admin through the admin to the uh, publisher, turn it in publishers where a, a ticket will be generated to rectify that problem and has to be done through the admin of the college. I'm, I'm speaking about the turn it in. So they, uh, after getting that uh, request, uh, generating that ticket. Uh, so one two days because there will be a queue for that especially during uh, this period. Um, so it, uh, that will be uh, looked into by the publishers and it will be deleted and they will again ask, do you have to delete it permanently or keep it back? You have to delete, they have to say to delete it permanently and it will be deleted by them permanently. And after that, you will get an email from the publishers and then you can submit, resubmit your article where it will be you will get uh, uh, expected result for your uh, article from the terminal. Uh, so there is one more question, ma'am. It is like, what is the weightage for open access publications? In the sense, uh, weightage in the sense? Uh, I think they might be asking like uh, whether if it is a uh, uh, you know as, uh, you know published as a open access it will have more weightage uh, than uh, non open uh, access like maybe i sent like that like uh, uh, yeah that's what uh, you have to see that whether uh, this uh, journal has uh, got any uh, is published under any authorized uh, publications publishers one thing and one more thing if it is uh, available open access also there is a chance of uh, getting the uh, fake uh, journals there this also you need to find out because uh, all open access journals uh, which are free are not uh, you know authenticated journals you have to check it uh, about its authenticity under the publishers platform you will get the details of that particular journal, what kind of journal it is and who, by whom it is published and what is the uh, scope for that journal and uh, under author guidelines also you will find uh, the uh, details of that, uh, the profile of that journal. Yeah, ma'am, there is one more question. Are paid journals uh, which are Scopus Index worth publishing? Pardon me, sir? Are paid journals which are uh, Scopus indexed worth publishing? A Scopus index? Last word I am not able to. Worth publishing. Worth publishing. Worth, worth publishing. Whether we can yeah, publish. Yeah. Uh, uh, Scopus uh, journals under uh, uh, publishing journals uh, which are Scopus indexed. Is that the question? 
no it is, is it worth to uh, you know publish in the paid journals is it worth to publish under scopus index journal is that yes, the question yes. yeah. yeah it's it's definitely because uh, now it is uh, the uh, uh, requirement uh, from the especially you now universities and all so even uh, from the act uh, you need even for uh, nirf ranking uh, you we need to publish the, the journals which are uh, scopus index under uh, index under scopus okay uh, i think if there are no other questions if any questions are there we can just uh, email to uh, Dr. Felsi Disosa's mail ID, it will be shared with you. Uh, thank you very much for your interactions. And if you have anything, any queries, once again, I'm, uh, I repeat, you can mail to ma'am at any time. She's uh, free to answer to all your queries and help out. As all these uh, literatures are the breadth of uh, research activities, and these are all very important for all the researchers. So once again, I thank uh, Dr. Felsi Souza for your very informative presentation, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sanjay, thank madam. You. Thank you, Rajesh PC, sir. Thank you, Usha, madam. Thank you, thank you, Rajesh Raju, sir. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. Thank I you, thank the management. <laughs> I thank uh, the management. I uh, thank our principal, Dr. Rio. I thank Dr. Uh, Sandhya Das, the convener, uh, the chief coordinator, uh, Dr. Felsi, the convener of this uh, program webinar series. I thank Dr. Usha Devakarla for our introduction. I thank all the uh, participants for your support. Thank you very much, our valuable participants. Thank you very much. You have been with us since uh, yesterday. You also continue to be with us today. Uh, it has been a wonderful uh, your association with us. Thank you very much. Let us uh, uh, join once again for the tomorrow's webinar at 10.30 sharp. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.